out a little bit, not just because I'm a board member, but long before I was a board member, Ashley and I have been doing Richmond social media for about a year and a half, and you don't have to pay to be here. It's never a cost to you. In order for us to do that, Ashley and I are not compensated to be here either. In order for us to do that, Ashley and I are not compensated to be here either. So in order for us to continue to do that, I just ask you to think about that from the match perspective. If there's an opportunity to give, it's to give now. We want to continue to bring you good, high quality content. We do a ton of research um, before we come and present on a specific topic and we want to be able to continue to do that so um, now is the best time to match or I mean to donate so that it gets matched all right so um, first and foremost before I even get started I've got to click over and get my presentation but then I got to tell you it's been a morning so I don't know about the rest of you but it has been a morning for me so how many of you are glad it's Friday Yes, so just turn to your neighbor next to you and be like, thank God we made it, give me five. We're here, we did it. All right, yes. So it has been one of those weeks, one of those weeks, I tell you, and my clothes should represent to you how the week went. So, Jean on Jean on Jean. Jean on Jean. I don't know what I was thinking, and I had a moment this morning at my, the foot of my bed. I got the little bench. My dogs are behind me. I'm putting my shoes on. I was like, okay, what's the day? Like, this afternoon, I've got something that I want to kind of dress down for. And I'm looking, I'm like, I am so wrinkled. And this is not me. Like, normally, I dress pretty nice. And I sat down, and I had my head down like, I can't believe I survived this week, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> Last weekend, I have a 16-year-old daughter. Feel sorry for me if you want, it's okay. I feel sorry for myself. So last weekend, she's not great when we go to out of town, and so I ground her while we're on vacation, because that's the kind of mom I am. <laughs> but, but you that's what she did, or are you just gonna No, we'll skip that, that part. Okay. It was not good. <laughs> So I ground her, but, but it's not good as a parent because you basically have grounded yourself when they get driver's license. So I say, I'm taking your car from you. She's like, okay, fine, whatever. And then she looked at me eye to eye. You're gonna regret this. I was like, no, no, throw down the gauntlet. It's on, I'll take you to school every day and I'm gonna honk and wave at your friends and I'm gonna pick you up every day. That lasted Monday, Monday, that was it. I was like, I have meetings, I have places I have to be, I've gotta to get to clients. I was late two days in a row. By the third day, she calls my mom and she's like, tells me, grandma is the person that's always here when I need her. So at three o'clock, I'm, I'm late, I'm calling her two days, I was in this building, I called my mom, I'm like, crap, I gotta pick her up in 15 minutes. Mom, can you go pick up Haley? So that was my week. So I just wanna inform you that normally I am not a wrinkled mess, but today, I am a wrinkled mess, and I'm okay because I survived till Friday. Yeah, we're gonna roll with it. Yeah, that's right. So we did it. And note to self: when you ground your teenage kids, don't take the car. Ground them from going out with their silly friends. That's that's what it is. All right. So today we're going to talk about um, automation and technology and when it comes to uh, managing your social profiles. And I am not gonna tell you that I'm the resident expert, I'm gonna talk about some of the tools that I have used when I managed social accounts in the past, but we're not the resident experts. The purpose of today really is to get back time. And if there was anything that I could have done this week was have my time back. So I think about it from a small business owner or from a nonprofit perspective, our time is really, really valuable. And how do we leverage some of the technology that's available today to increase and continue to work our social media accounts, but allow us to focus on our day job, be out there meeting with our customers, our clients, servicing our um, people. So that's really in a nutshell what we're gonna talk about today. All right, um, as Kate said, on uh, December 7th, we have Jeff Halfline coming. This conversation today is going to, it's kind of um, in front of when it really should be following it. This is gonna talk about content on your website and it's gonna be a huge conversation. And that's really the cornerstone or the important foundation of what we're gonna talk about today. So in order for some of the automation to really work best, you've got to have content out there and it needs to be placed probably out on your website. So Jeff's gonna be talking about that. I think it's gonna be a great conversation and we're glad that um, he's gonna be joining us next month. But first, we always like to celebrate something. So <laughs> how many of you watch this show? It's so funny. Thank you. Okay, we got two. It's on Netflix. <laughs> it's hilarious. Um, I won't tell you what it's called. Um, 
but it is very funny. It's a very, very funny show. So if you get in there and you start looking around in Netflix and you want a funny comedy, this is the show to go to. It has me in tears um, all the time. It's just a funny, it's, funny show. It's, it's called Shit's Creek. Creek. Yeah, Shit's Creek. Like, not nah, looks like it doesn't look like the real word shit. It's yeah, creepy. yeah. I T T S. It's hilarious. It's really funny. But I'd like to talk. I'd like for some of us to share what is winning for you. We are coming into the final last quarter of this year. We talked about a ton of topics. I want to turn it over to you and I want to celebrate what you've done this year. So give me an example of something that is working for you. Yes. Our website. Yes. What'd you do with your website? Well, as a startup, yep. we started out with homepage and contact us. Yeah. We added an about us. But now we have our services and a whole lot of other blog and Good. in the news and things like that. And so we were able to fill it out with the help of Kate. She's around. She was helpful to us. Um, anyhow, um, Eric even had a, a someone he hasn't worked with for like 15 years. Look at him at LinkedIn, where we have our website went to our website, found the phone number, and called it. Give me five from social to the website. Yes. That's great. Great. We celebrate that. All right. What else do we have? Yes. We have a Capture of the Week contest uh, with photographers, and that has really increased the number of people that look at our Facebook page. Every week, uh, they get to click like on the picture they like from something we've captured the week before. Yeah. And then that's, that student gets a free 8 by 10 picture. Oh, and awesome. Really nice. Way to give back. Knowledge, so. Yeah, give me five. I love it. Great job. So, and you call it Picture of the well, Week? How do we follow you? Capture how of the Week. How do we follow week. you? Uh, it's dayjoephotos.com on Facebook. Can you spell it? D-A-J-O photos. Perfect. All right, I like it. Okay, that side, of, this side of the room, they're two to zero over here. Yes. <laughs> Caitlin. My marketing win is Erica. Um, she took over the marketing job like five months ago, and like every time I'm like, hey, I need a graphic that like does this and kind of looks like this. She's just on it. Nice. Really? I'm going to give you a high five and you for sharing. Thanks. Yes. Nice. All right. What else? One last one. <laughs> yes, Pat. Well, I formed an LLC for my new business. Yes. And started a new Gmail email. Nice. <laughs> You said, that means Gmail. Yes. <laughs> I'm an endorser of Gmail. CK, it's officially in writing. <laughs> and started the beginning of the uh, website. Um, the free website Gmail gives you, but yeah. it's something. That's right. Hey, let's get started. <laughs> Small steps matter. Small steps matter. All right, anything else before we go? Now's your time to get a high five. I don't give them out often. <laughs> All right. Okay, so what inspired you to join us today? We always like to start by capturing what do you want to learn while you're here so that we ensure that we deliver what you want to hear before the end of our time. So whoever wants to start, what do you want to get out of today? Get to start with a heart. I pre-build a heart. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Yes. Well, I don't have a business yet. I'm a new health and life coach, uh -huh. and I want to learn how to use social media to get myself out there. All right, perfect. How to use social to get yourself out there. All right. Yes. I can say a lot of things. Um, first of all, it's always helpful. It's always helpful. And in business and personal. And then just seeing community and seeing how excited community, you know, community leaders and business owners, um, how excited they are about what they're doing. Nice. And you like, you feel like this is a community here? Absolutely. Yes, I agree with that. And actually, I was going to have you high five yourself about that this morning until I had my meltdown. So yes, boom, um, we got the compliment. Um, yesterday, we were on the radio, and uh, Phil Quinn said, you know, the thing I love about what you guys are doing is that you're building a community. And I said, yes, they don't come to watch me and Ashley. They come to support each other. They come here to learn from each other, talk to each other. And he said, you all share each other's stuff. I'm like, yes, we share each other's stuff. If we see it, we share it. All right, what else do you want to learn today? Because if that's the bar, it's set really low. <laughs> yes. Or at least probably fine if this is yep. the list. Done. Yes. You said earlier when you started 
started out is get it, you could do anything different this week if you get your time back. Yes. Um, that's why I'm here because I sometimes feel like I'm just absorbed constantly nonstop and I need to have a better process, better system of, of how to get my time back. <laughs> Love that. Get my time back. Yes. Emma? Consistency. Consistency. I like that one. Consistency. Bill? I like to like what's relevant. I feel like I've fallen behind in that. What's, you know, what's relevant? The platform is the best. Kind of like the YouTube now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're right. You All right. What's best? Anything else? Now this side of the room was kicking up. Yes. Effective consistency. Effective consistency. Oh, not just consistency, but effective. I like it. All right. Anything over here? Yes. I, I think the use of YouTube is, my kids only watch YouTube. <laughs> they don't watch television. They yeah. really don't. And I guess that's the generation that I'm not getting. Mm -hmm. So I guess the best use of that, and how to not get them to watch only 10 seconds of your video. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because when you look at your so data. Stick. I got to do magic, or I got to do something to get them, you know what I mean? I, I guess that I need to stick. It's, it is, it's tough. No, you're exactly right. It is tough. It's That's absolutely tough. I feel like that could be its own topic, honestly, because, you know, I teach at Miami University. Yeah, they don't read anything. It's video, 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 video. That's all they want. And then when we look at our data and our metrics, like we did an awesome video for Esmonds, and I'm like, we got all these views. We got 3,000 views. And I looked at the data. The average watch time was 18 seconds. Yeah. And I'm like, man, so we got to catch them early and we have to have something really, really powerful up front. So I think we could do a whole workshop just on that building that power punch at the beginning. So we write that down as a future title or something. I like it. <laughs> I like it. All right. Anything else? Okay. So I'm going to further demonstrate how bad my week was and then I wasn't able to edit this morning. So today we're going to find the right fit tool. And what else? Well, Lorley didn't circle back around to finish it. So we'll see how this goes today. See, I'm telling you, it was a train wreck this morning. I left my cell phone in the car. Yeah, it's a day. All right, so how much time do you think you spend engaging on social media right now? Too, mu too much? Let's define the word engaging, yeah. though. Let's define um, engaging. Do thank we, you. Do you want to define the word that? You, you go ahead. No, I mean, it's up to, well, for your question, engaging could mean different things to different people. I say posting. I say commenting, I say posting about your business, commenting, responding, getting into the messenger app to be able, if somebody posts a question about that, um, that could be going out and posting a video, that could also be I'm putting stuff on Twitter, I'm capturing images, I'm you know, taking pictures and then getting those uploaded. I consider all of that engaging on social, specifically for your business, but we'll throw personal in there too. How much time do you think you spend? We can be honest. Per day, per week? Um, I say per day, let's say per day. Probably an hour. An hour? Yes. Say like two to five. Two to five hours. Okay. Noreen's like two to five hours probably. All right. Peggy, you said too much, didn't you? Yeah, and one thing you didn't mention that I do is engage with other people. Oh, yeah. Trying to build a business community where I support those people that I work with. So you, and you're looking at, am I also reposting, con not just focused on myself, but am I reposting, am I liking, am I sharing what, I, uh, what others are posting? Perfect, I like that. Yeah, the reason I think that's so important is because I think it's very easy to think social media is just publishing content and then walking away, right? And that's why this title is, you can't set it and forget it, it's not a crock pot, you know? So a lot of people see, I'm on social, I'm posting, I shared my blog post, but then they never resp respond back. Only 3% of brands actively and consistently respond back to their customers. 95% of brands are in broadcast only mode. That's a huge difference. We have to be engaging. So I love when Peggy mentioned I'm actually reaching people out and inviting them back in. I'm following up. Lorley, I love that you mentioned Messenger, that you're actually responding on Messenger. How many of you get direct messages on Facebook now? A lot of us, almost yeah. all of us, we get direct messages on Facebook from our customers. So we have to respond to those really quickly. The average response time that a customer wants is three hours. The average time it takes a brand is 10. So we're already letting them down from the first interaction if we're not quick, right? That's why this is really important. So, so is it effective, effective engagement? Not necessarily, you can spend five hours going like this, right? Scrolling, you can be scrolling, you can just be publishing. Right? Exactly, exactly. And that, if anything, like that's what I want to hit home today is it has to be meaningful engagement. It can't just be self-promotion, right? It can't just be like, oh, I'm doing social because I shared that blog post or I scheduled all these posts out. I'm fine. And then you never look at them again. 
So in right? that context, I would say I don't spend enough. Right? Yeah. Mm. So you feel like I'm being, I'm on there, but I'm really not engaging the way that I want to in comment. A lot of it could be like mindless, it's that, I call it mindless scrolling. Yep. And I feel like to be effectively engaging for the business aspect, I should be devoting more time, but I don't, sometimes I don't want to. <laughs> It's overwhelming. You get yes. Well, we have to be really intentional, right? Yes. Yeah. So trying to be intentional and really focus on that sometimes is just like nope, put the carpet over my head and just scroll, stop. just scroll. Yeah. So, I couldn't agree more. And this is such perfect truth. Social media is a lot of work. It's an absolute lot of work. So if we have to choose between, can, where will my automation? Automation is not going to be the engagement piece. It's not going to be the likes and the thank yous and the comments and answering your customers. If we're gonna put automation, let's put it on the original posting piece. If we're gonna pick up and gain some time back, let's figure out what tools will help us schedule ahead of time so that when we are spending our time there, it's more engaging and I'm responding and answering and liking. Does that make sense? Do you all agree with that? Okay. All right, so here's the key, content calendar. This is the key. In order to make the content work in the auto um, functionality, you've got to have a content calendar. This is what I would say one of the biggest things that Ashley and I see when we're working with folks is they don't have, they have not built out the content calendar. It's all organic in the moment. It's whatever I'm feeling and doing at the time that ends up getting posted. Or maybe if some, if I'm a marketing director, somebody says, hey, post X, Y, and Z. But we don't, we have not thought out a plan ahead of time. We're not going to focus on the content calendar today. I'm thinking that's going to be like the first quarter, um, um, uh, sessions because so that we can start to what does a content calendar look like but it's critical in order for the auto posting software to really do its job you have to be forward thinking about what you're going to be posting in order to post them so that they go out in the future so there's tons of other free opportunities out there for you to pull or just simply use an Excel spreadsheet and we'll talk a little bit about uploading batches um, and if you get to that level where you're like you know what I really want some time back we're going to talk a little bit about that if you can master after these two things, you're going to end up getting more free time. It's, it's kind of a one-two punch is the way I consider it. Kat, do you have anything to add to that, Ashley? I think no, that's I important. Think I would pull really quickly. How many of you would say that you do not have a content calendar? Like, we're, we're a super honest bunch today, that's good. So I think that's a really important topic that we actually have templates that we could use and we could even have a session focused on like building out the content calendar, right? Because I think, to, to your point, if you really wanna get this right, you have to have some planning in place and some intentional thought to plan this out. All right, so we're going to talk about first what are the different options when it comes to um, software. This is my interpretation of the software. I did not read this in a blog. I did not, nobody told me this. This is when I analyzed all the different th options that are out there. I feel like they fall in three different buckets. The first bucket is platform specific, um, uh, like uh, within the tool itself. So think of Facebook, and we'll talk a little bit about that. So platform specific scheduling. The next one's like an all in one, but you're really selecting the content you own the content it's yours the third one is a system where it actually curates the content for you so that means it was going to go out and it will search and find content that it thinks is relevant to your audience and it's going to come back and say Noreen we think this is something you may want to post so three different options and this is we're going to dive into each one of these as we go through this morning and then at the end you'll have an opportunity to do some research on your own we've got the laptops fired up and you're going to get to go out and kind of pick one and figure out what you think might be the best fit for you. So let's start with the platform specific scheduling. Oh, there's my secret again. What's the secret? Content calendar. Make sure we've got that. All right, so the first one we have is Facebook. And Facebook schedule right here. So if you want to, when you get ready to go to the post button, you can choose to schedule that post out in the future. You can, if you notice on your phone, it will say publish now. But you can choose to publish later. You can then make it a forward out um, schedule. You don't have to have it right then and there. This is great if you have um, several different images. Let's say, for example, that you're going to, 
you, um, you take a bunch of photos at an event and you want to spend the rest of the event time really engaged and talking to people, but you want to get some photos out there. Post them to go every 10 minutes, five, you know, 10 or 15 minutes so it looks like you're posting as you're going, but you actually set them all up while you're sitting at the dinner table of all the photos that you took at the beginning of the event. Does that make sense? Yeah, like that's an sense. easy thing that you could do. You're using it right within the platform. The other platform, um, Phil Quinn is a big uh, lover of TweetDeck, and the reason TweetDeck is great is because it's owned by who? Who do you think owns that? <laughs> Twitter. <laughs> so do you think Twitter will suppress its own platform? No, it's going to be like, good, we're glad you're using us. So it's going to let that post reach its audience with more intentionality than some of the other software that we're going to talk about. And that would be the same for both Facebook and um, TweetDeck. The last one is called Later, and it's specific for Instagram. Now, the reason we want to think about these is say, where is my way to win? Where is my target audience? Who do I have the most followers with that are my target audience, the people I want to reach? You don't have to be on every platform. You can pick and choose which is the right platform for you. These are the three that are typically the most popular, and that's why I picked those three. So if you only go today, if you leave here today and you say, you know what, I'm a rock star on Instagram, so later is the right fit for me, Check, done, you've got something new to use going into next year and that's perfectly fine, you're one step up. It's, um, if you say, you know what, I want to do more than that, great, we're gonna be talking about that here in the next few minutes. The thing I like about the single posts is that because they are owned by Facebook, TweetDeck, own, Twitter owns it, you're more likely to increase visibility of the post. The biggest uh, downside to the software is that it's suppressed unless you pay to play. So we see the most engagement from Instagram because it's not quite as a pay to play model as Facebook. Facebook is paying for Instagram. We know that it, it, there is a pay to play model, but it doesn't suppress it near as much as Facebook does. Um, if you look at LinkedIn, I just, uh, I typically in these sessions, we talk a lot about like post to LinkedIn because it gets organic reach. Well, then I just read two days ago that they're gonna try to move to this pay to play model. And I'm like, no, this is not good. We, we don't wanna pay to be on every single platform. So the reason I like those, those is it'll increase the visibility chance. You'll be less dependent on a content calendar. If you use one of the single, you're not so overwhelmed that you have to have content for every platform. Just focus on Twitter and that's okay. And there's, they're all free options. You don't have to pay to be on any of those. Do you have any questions about the first platform or anything that you want to add? I think you got it. And when we do our breakout, we'll show you where these are. Yep. So if you're like, I don't know where the Facebook scheduling is, when we get to that point, we'll show you where it is and how you can do it. Yep. If you focus on only one, then are you only reaching a certain age group? You're going to reach whoever your followers are. So if yep. the majority of your followers that are engaging with you is on Instagram and you go with later, that's okay. It doesn't mean you'll forget about Facebook or LinkedIn or anything else. You'll just have more work going into Instagram using an auto posting tool. But it will reach whomever is your followers there. So if it's Instagram's your way to win, then I would go with later. If Facebook's it, then just start using the future posting thing and see how it goes. All right. Any other questions? We'll talk about the next. Yes. This okay. <laughs> um, when we're talking about doing a calendar and um, doing auto posting, it made me think: <coughs> what are the best times to post those for social media? Say that you want to do Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, and I know I've known this before, but I haven't followed up in a while. But I know there's specific times for each platform that are the best times for posting? Yep. I have it, those because my students just took a midterm exam on those. Okay. So I can send them out. <laughs> OK. I really do. I have the latest research on that. So I'm happy to share that out on her platform. I'll just send it to Kate as a summary to follow up and then give you the best practice times on all those. And to answer that, I would also say that the platforms will show you when your followers are um, most engaged on that particular platform. So if you go to Facebook Insights, it will show you that, and it will also include Instagram. And um, if you go to the analytics, they're not near as strong on Twitter, but you can start to see when are people actually on. So I would look at that, that's specific to your audience. Because if I am somebody that targets maybe younger people, they may be more active in the evening or later at night. And if I'm a different age group, maybe they're more active in the morning. So look on your specific page too, and then she's got the more general one of they on Instagram versus Facebook. Yep. You're welcome. You're welcome.
All right, next up is the three all-in-one scheduling. So this is uh, Friends Plus Me, Buffer, and Hootsuite. I'm gonna break down each one of these. Um, these are, there are tons, which I'm gonna show you here on another slide. There's a lot of options. These are just the three that I focus on. The Friends and Me um, is a free option, so you can see there, and it starts with the $7.50 per month, but there is a free option. It supports all the platforms, so the Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and others. There is a browser extension, and um, there is a mobile app that's available, and there's scheduling option, too. So anybody in here use Friends Plus Me or heard of them? So um, I think from a free option, it's pretty intuitive. I watched some several things. I've not personally used it. I have used the other two. I have not used this one. But what I liked about it is that if there's still a free option, which we're going to talk about one that doesn't anymore. And the other thing is the browser extension. Does anybody know why that's important, the browser extension? Okay. I was going to demo it, but it's not on my computer. I was going to show you how this actually works. But um, basically, by having the browser extension on there, if I'm reading an article, let's say I'm in Forbes magazine, and there's something about some new ways to do strategic planning. Well, that's right up my alley. That's what I would want to share with my audience. From my browser extension, if I've got this, I can click on that icon, and I can schedule it to send automatically. So this is great. If, it, if It's one of the things that I love most. One of the things that I prefer is to make sure that they have an extension available on, it's only available for Chrome, but it's, it's a powerful tool, so one that worth writing down. Buffer is the one that I use, that I like. Um, it's, I just used it for many years when I used to have uh, uh, social accounts that I managed. So free option is available. Um, it supports all the different platforms. You can get up to three for free. It has the, a browser extension. I use it all the time. You can see this is what it looks like um, when you go into like, when I go into my personal Facebook, I will have a buffer option already there and it will set. One of the things I like about buffer is that it will um, randomly post. So you can choose a time or you can just put it in there and it will randomly post and pick the time that it thinks is best for that particular platform. Um, there's a mobile app. The challenge is there is no calendar feature for free and the, there's no analytics on that. So if you want to dive into the reporting side, this would not be the good one to use if you want a free option. The last one for the all in end scheduling is Hootsuite. How many of you have heard Hootsuite or used Hootsuite? Okay, so I used Hootsuite for years. It's no longer a free option, and I found it suppressed most of the content. It was really a challenge to be able to use it, um, but I think that's across all the platforms now. So this will never, none of these are gonna replace organic. It's just not gonna happen. You've got to be able to have a balance between what you're posting and your organic um, content, but I believe that they're getting better, and I think that there is going to be um, kind of a, relationship building between all these software and the different platforms. They can't continue to suppress it, but then they want the pay-to-play model, and there's going to be a give because more p people will stop using it if, it, if they're not going to see um, the information. I think that's talks that those companies are having. Um, there's a Chrome extension. There is an app available. There is analytics. I mean, it's got everything, and it's going to start at about $29 a month. Bulk upload from Excel. This is uh, really important if you're going to do a content calendar. You build it out in Excel and you can upload it. That will make your life a bazillion times easier. You're shaking your head over there. Have you done it before? <laughs> you want to do it. You want to do it. I don't know yet. It's good. I'm telling you, you're going to love it. You take, you put all your content in there and you, you got the image link in there and you just load up 30 of them, boom, done. It's great. Manual entry, typing them all Instead out. of manual entry. Yes, wonderful. Kate has a question. Yes. Is that the only one that has bulk upload? No, there's some of the others, but most of them you're not going to get with the free option because Hootsuite automatically is $29. I highlighted that as for $29, you're going to get that feature. But it only works if you build the content calendar. Okay, the last one is the, curate, the curated software. So it's going to let you, oh, sorry. Yes, um, the last, you can manage multiple accounts from one location. You can choose the features and cost. You control the content. That's why you would choose one of those three options, Hootsuite, Buffer, or uh, Friends Plus Me. The last option, I just want you to know that this is such a crowded field, and this isn't even all of them. There are so many more. This is all the different software options that you have. I'm going to focus on two. I'm going to talk about Meet Edgar, and I'm going to talk about Crowdfire. Um, but there are some others, like this OK to Post is specific to business to business. So there's a lot of other options out there. I'm just going to summarize some of the ones that um, I think are most impactful. 
All right, CrowdFire. So with the CrowdFire feature, you've got a free option. Um, you can schedule 10 posts per account, and there's some other additional things. You get the Chrome extension, but you don't get um, custom posting schedules, so it'll tell you as you go through there what some of the options you'll get for the free. Um, the thing I like about this is it's the content curation piece of it. So. Uh, with CrowdFire, it's going to go out and use AI technology to go out and look and see what content it thinks is most valuable to you and your company and your followers, and it's going to try to recommend that that's what you share. The idea is that I no longer have to be the only person that writes the blogs. Instead, if I'm okay sharing other companies' blogs and, cre again, increasing my content, so I'm going to use the uh, uh, Cardinal Greenway as an example. You may have things about running shoes, and you may have things about uh, running in certain weather or preparing for a 5K or whatever. There's tons of other content out there and you're really not in the blog writing business if you if you don't want to be this thing will go out and find it and it will circulate and repost that and and take some of the pressure off of you to create all of your own content that's the thing helps lessen the time that you spend researching so for those yes. who said I want time back that how I mean to researching articles I could spend I could get locked in for like two hours you know because I actually like it but it's very time consuming so this is gonna help save you time on research too Yep, I agree. It's, it's, it's a nice one. The opposite of that is going to be Meet Edgar. Meet Edgar is 49 bucks flat across the board. Meet Edgar is effective if you have a lot of content. So if you have podcasts to share, you have blog articles to share, you have images to share, you've got a, um, a plethora of already built content, Meet Edgar will go out and... Um, I'll try to think of her name. Uh, Erica Anderson. Uh, she owns this consulting firm that I, I admire and really like. She has been writing for Forbes since like 2011. And this thing just goes out and gets those old posts and it just keeps posting and it takes some of the pressure off of her. She doesn't have to write near the blog. But this is only effective if I've already built all of that out. If I don't have it, Meet Edgar is not a good option. Does that make sense? It's not going to go get the curation. It's looking for you to provide it. Okay. Um, there is no Instagram with it right now. I know. Jaw off the floor. I know. That's what I thought. I was like, oh. But it says it's coming soon. Um, but it does include Facebook groups. So how many of you are in a Facebook group of some sort? Okay. I'm in one. I don't remember what it's called. Um, it's pretty good. The lady that runs it, she uses Meet Edgar. And it's always posting from her um, website different blog articles. That is a good feature. But it only matters if you want if your audience is in a Facebook group. If they're not, then it doesn't really matter. Um, all right. So, <laughs> why did I pick a turtle? Well, I'm going to tell you that really fast first, and then I'll get into the questions. This so, is the best part of English, sure. uh, right. that is exact. How did you know that's what I was going to say? <laughs> so I'm walking out of here yesterday because uh, Thursday, you know, I'm walking out. And I said, Ed, you got to make me go to stuff. And he said, you're like a turtle. You just want to go home on the weekends. And I'm like, you're right. I am a turtle because I do love being home. I do like it. So when I was thinking, I, I said to Google, I was like, I want something that's like a thinking. And then this turtle come up. And I was like, yes, I want the turtle. So thinking about which option is best for you. These are on, that, uh, on your little handout. These are the questions that you should be asking about you, what you want, what your company needs. Do I only want to focus on one platform? Am I willing to pay for this software? So if, I want to, if I'm not willing to pay, you've got to immediately move Hootsuite off, Meet Edgar off, any of the ones that are going to have a minimum payment. If you don't want to pay for it, then take those off the table. Do I want to use a content calendar? Am I going to be doing that? Do I have a lot of cur uh, created content, so blogs, videos, anything that's going to be regularly used? Do I need bulk upload features? If I'm never going to put anything on Excel spreadsheet, then don't look for that feature. It's not because you're going to pay more money for that feature. Do I want reporting? Laura Lee is saying, yes, you do. <laughs> but you get to decide. Do you want to analyze the effectiveness of the post? Laura Lee is saying, yes, you do. But you get to decide. Do you want to look at that? I'm begging you. Please look and see if it's effective. So um, these are the questions. Now we've got about 20 minutes left, which is what we wanted to, or about, yeah, about 15 minutes left. We wanted to give you an opportunity to check out some of these. So we're going to do a quick breakout.